good morning students last lecture we have seen the different types of leaves also we have seen the structure of the leaves now there we have seen the veins now these veins here they are arranged by two types and the arrangement of the veins in a leaf is called as the venation now you take a people leaf and a maize leaf and observe them carefully now in people leaf you will find out that now this is not the people leaf this is some other leaf but it is somewhat like a people leaf only so here you can see that one mid veins arrangement of the veins you see one mid vein is there and from the mid vein so many other veins branches are there so such type of venation in a leaf is called as the reticulate venation now this reticulate venation it is found in a dicotyledonous plants so if you see the reticulate venation in any of the plant then without seeing the seed of that plant you can say that that plant is a dicotyledonous plant means the seeds has got two cotyledons now the next type of venation is here this one see this venation here so the, in this case we see that the veins they are parallel to each other so such type of venation in a plant is called as the reticulate venation now this reticulate venation here it is found in monocotyledonous plant now monocotyledonous examples of the monocotyledonous plant is maize sugar cane and so on now this jowar rice these are all the plants with the mon uh, monocotyledonous seeds now these monocotyledonous plants the venation is the parallel venation now next we will see here this one here this table is there this table you will complete by seeing the uh, uh, by seeing observing the plant means the maize plant what type of leaf it is then shape of the leaf blade how it is then venation how it is there then shape of the leaf margin shape of the leaf apex where the petiole is present or not stipule is s or not all these things you will complete yourself in the next lecture i'll check it now next we will see next part of the flower we will the part of the plant we will see is the flower now take a hibiscus flower now this is a hibiscus flower and observe this hibiscus flower carefully so what we observe in this here this one in this hibiscus flower they have a long or a short stalk called pedicle now pedicle you can see here this one pedicle is there with the help of which the flower is attached to the plant then the other parts on the end of the pedicle is attached to the other end one end of the pedicle is attached to the stem and the other end is expanded and so swollen and it is called as a receptacle so here you can see this one here this end of the pedicle it is attached to the stem and then the other end it is swollen and to that swollen part here the flower is attached so that swollen part it is called as the receptacle now the petals and other parts of the flower are supported on the receptacle so here see this is the receptacle so on this receptacle this receptacle here on this receptacle here this one the flower other parts of the flower they are arranged now the other parts of the flower are calyx corolla corolla androecium gynoecium are the different parts of the flower now the calyx you can see here this one this green part of the uh, flower and in which green part of the flower in which the bud is covered is called as the calyx then this colorful part of the flower this is called as the corolla then this one androecium is there this one androecium is there and inside this here in the there the gynoecium is there 
So now let us see one by one the different parts of the flower. Now the first is here calyx. In the bud condition, the petals are covered by a leaf-like part called as the sepals, which are green in color. They form the calyx. And then corolla. This is made up of colorful parts called petals. Now petals, they are of different colors. Even if you take a hibiscus flower, then we get we can see different colors of hibiscus flowers are there: white, yellow, orange. Red, pink. So these are the diff then even if, for example rose also. If you take rose, we get of different colors. Now the different colors of the uh, corolla or the petals that gives color to the flower. Now observe the shape and uh, color and smell of the corolla of various flowers like rose, then chrysanthemum, is shivanti, then hibiscus, then mogra, you know, uh, then kanher and tagar. Kanher also. It is there of various colors. White is there, pink is there, red and all. The next part of the flower is androecium. Now, androecium. This is the main reproductive part of the flower. Now, it consists of stamens, and each stamen is made up of anther and filament. Now, here see this one here. This is the stamen. Uh, this one androecium. So, stamen. It is uh, here. This one yellow part which you see here. No, that is the androecium. So, it is made up of stamen and the filament. Then the last part of this flower, it is the gynoecium. Gynoecium, it is a female reproductive part of the flower. So it is made up of carpels. The carpels consist of stigma, style, and ovary. Now here see this one. Uh, this. So this one on the top you can see stigma is there. Then long tube-like structure is style is there, and then inside this green part here the. Uh, Ovary is there. Now, if you slit open, cut open the uh, hibiscus flower, then you can see inside ovary is there. Now, this is the cross section of the flower. Now, uh, vertical cross section of the hibiscus flower. So, you can see in the hibiscus flower here, this one. So, you get exactly two parts of it. So, here this colorful part is corolla. Then here on this stigma is there. Now, this tube-like structure it is called as the style. That is a part of the gynoecium, and then inside here, this white structure, this here, the ovary is there. Then here, this green part, and in which the bud is covered, that is called as the calyx. And then here, you can see this yellow part. You can see that uh, that is the androecium. So androecium consists of two parts: anther and the filament. Filament is a tube-like structure with the help of which these yellow anthers they are connected to the flower. Now. Now, after maturity, what happens here? This anthers here, this anthers, which are there, they burst, and the pollen grains which are released fall on the stigma. So this process is called as the pollination. Now, due to pollination, what happens? The ovules in the ovary get fertilized. So fertilized ovules from the seeds and the ovary develop into a fruit. Now, for for what? Now the question is asked: For what use? To a plant are the insects flitting about around its flower. Now, insects when they are flitting around its flowers, then they uh, uh, forms the pollination, helps in the process of pollination. Now, observe the various flowers and complete the following chart. You can take any two, three flowers. You can take, find out the write down the name of the flower in the first column, the number of sepals, then sepals free are united that you write, the number of petals, then. Petals, whether they are free or united, then the form of the androecium and gynoecium. This table also will complete yourself. Now, after this year, next part of the flower plant is fruit. Now, we eat many different types of fruits. Now, each fruit each type of fruit has its own characteristics. There are variations in their shape, color, taste, etc. Mango contains only one seed, whereas jackfruit consists of many small fruitlets. Each with its own seed. Jackfruit, funnels. Most of you eat it, isn't it? So there, small fruitlets are there inside the jackfruit when it's ripe, and then inside those fruitlets again single seeds are there. But at, as a whole, jackfruit is, uh, consists of many seeds in them. So here you can see this is the jackfruit plant. Uh, jackfruit fruit, jack, uh, jackfruit. Then this is what your cashew nut. Cashew nut means the seed is present outside. Then this is mango, the single seeded plant. Then this one is uh, peas. 
so peas it is a it consists of many seeds in it and then plum single seeded one and then here this one groundnut groundnuts uh, also it has got one two or more than two uh, seeds in it so now here we see that here so if you observe the fruits of bay that is zippers mango chikku apple etc what do we observe each fruit has a different skin or the shell fleshy part is also different and seed now each of the in case of fruits like cashew the seed is outside the fruit now see here the seed is outside the fruit and this seed we actually eat is nothing but the cashew then soak the seed of pea wheat rice jowar groundnut in water for 3 to 2 hours and press the seeds with your fingers and observe them now which gets seeds which divides divided into two equal parts they are called as the dicotyledonous seeds and the seeds which do not divide into two equal parts is called as the monocotyledonous seeds so here what we see they are called uh, this one they are called as a monocotyledonous seeds so now with this this second chapter is also complete we have seen the different parts of the plant in this chapter and i hope it's very much clear to all of you now